A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Let's turn our attention to the growing concerns around what some call a growing antisocial, volatile and disruptive behaviour of young people on our streets in towns and cities around Australia. Well, our next guest leads Street Peace, a not-for-profit, faith-based organisation providing outreach, mentoring, training and employment opportunities for high-risk youth in Melbourne's outer southeast region. Jay Schelling leads Street Peace. He's the founder and CEO based in the heart of Frankston in Victoria. And Jay's joining us. Hey, Jay, welcome along to 2020. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Jay, you've got a growing team there uh, on the streets of Frankston. Uh, what are the biggest challenges that you're facing? Look, I think um, we have a serious issue with family breakdown across our nation. And um, I think, uh, you know, the restlessness of that that's produced in children um, and, and the, um, yeah, the, the ongoing results of that, uh, that youth uh, are not able to concentrate at school, so they're dis- getting disengaged from school or um, they're getting involved in drug and alcohol um, addictions to try to self-medicate and then many of them are starting to congregate together to try to find some sense of belonging and family uh, that, they, that they should have at home. And so all of this results in, <clears throat> um, I guess, the blind, if you call it, blind leading the blind, and results in, you know, activities where youth are involved in crime, um, involved in um, um, different levels of uh, antisocial behaviour, um, and, and, and in many, many, many cases they're actually also very vulnerable of, um, of uh, you know, of, of self-harm uh, as well. So... Yeah, we're looking at a range of different issues resulting in, in um, I guess, the, the situation or the, 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 the fabric of our society being torn apart um, within the family that's resulting on so many of these kids being found on the fringes. Well, Jay, I'm really, really interested in the way you're approaching what you do on the streets of Frankston and, you know, a a community that's got a a reputation for some uh, pretty challenging youth on the streets. But you take a different perspective. A lot of people are saying right now with a youth crime crisis in all sorts of communities around the country that police need to have a whole lot more empowerment, that the courts need to convict those youth. You're taking a love and kindness approach, and I wonder if you can give us some insight into the value of the approach that you're taking. Yeah, look, I think um, I think that we uh, at Street Peace have a heart to get alongside these youth and care for them. Um, you know, uh, we had a we had a pretty big gang twenty years ago called the Apex Gang. Um, that was sort of the beginning of of some of this this youth issue or, uh, that we, we, we're we seeing currently. But, uh, you know, this gang, one of the key gang members said that, um, w- you know, they joined Apex and Apex actually gave them the support that they needed, that they were looking for in their own community. Um, they found it within the gang culture and it was really a lack of the support of their local community in in um, getting alongside them when they're in, in need and and, I guess, not just, I mean, it's not just loving. I mean, we have tough love with these kids, but actually seeing them, seeing their value, uh, hearing their stories, um, understanding where they're coming from and creating a safe space and a safe environment for them to connect and engage with healthy adults um, and, and, and uh, through, through trusting relationships that allow us to speak into their lives. And I think um, I, I am truly convinced that that love transforms people and it's the one thing that, um, that will remain forever. And I think a lot of these kids, a lot of these young people are looking for a sense of belonging. They're looking for, a, for an adult or a person who has a listening ear to be able to hear their story. And um, they're in much need of care. <clears throat> a lot of them are getting neglected at home. Um, I would say that uh, 95% of the time uh, when you actually uh, go home and you see the family situation, not always, but majority of the time, uh, where these kids have come from uh, suddenly starts to make sense why they're involved in crime. 
So the finding a sense of community in a crime gang and uh, you're saying, well, hang on a second, uh, love and kindness by way of a faith-driven project uh, with your Christian faith to the fore, if you can provide that sort of community, that's going to help young people belong. Oh, 100%. See, what what we see is, uh, you know, where we have, you know, I'll give you a rundown of how we run. So Street Peace um, has outreach workers that actually go into the fray. So we go into the spaces where we have sort of hotspots, youth hotspots where they hang out. And we're out every week. We're out multiple times a week on the streets, um, connecting with these kids. Um, and we've been doing it for four years. So we obviously know you know, we've had started with youth who are 13 that have gone all the way through to 17, 18, 19 now. So we started working with them when they're young, journeying with them. They're coming out every week. We find new kids out on the street that are disengaged from school, that have run away from home, that are um, that are trying to uh, find a sense of identity and belonging and value. And they're out there getting involved in a host of different things, and we're connecting with them. And <clears throat> ultimately, Street Pieces, you know, has become a family for many of these kids. In fact, that, that's, we ask we every, you know, every three or four months we do, do a little questionnaire for the youth. We ask, why do you come to Street Peace? And the overwhelming response that we get from these youth, we have up to 80 youth on a Wednesday night at our nest drop-in centre. The, the, the biggest response is Street Peace is family, Street Peace is home. Um, Street Peace is safe. I'm safer at Street Peace than I am sometimes. They've said that, you know, safer at Street Peace than I am at my own home. And so um, what a lot of these kids are are, are finding is they're finding a healthy um, family environment um, that that I think that, that, you know, these kids are looking for. And, uh, yeah, absolutely, we're a faith-based organisation. And, uh, you know, I I love the fact that, you know, God started with a family in the garden and he's coming back for a bride. He's going to come back for a family. And... uh, one thing that the church represents and carries, if anything we should carry to the world, is, is a heart and an identity of family that um, so many of these kids are longing for right now. Jay, special honour to you. I love your passion. And I picked up something from your Street Peace website uh, where you say you are relentlessly pursuing volatile, at-risk youth, uh, not just hanging around waiting for them to come to you. Uh, what does a typical day or a typical night look like for you when you're actually connecting with these kids uh, who are in vulnerable situations on the street? You know, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's such a wide variety of, of, of youth that we engage with with so many different experiences and so many different lives. But I would say that, you know, consistently it's, it's being there for them. It's, it's, it, might sound, it might sound crazy, but it's as little as celebrating their birthdays. Many of these youth don't even have their birthdays celebrated um, by their family. Like, um, it's a little thing. It's the care. It's, oh, you know, do you need some food? Do you need some clothing? It's, it's seeing the need. Um, oh, you need help with the resume. Let's do that. It's that mentoring relationship, that one-to-one where it's like, Number one, we've established trust. We've built trust with these youth. And then we are, once we've got trust, we can lead them. And, uh, yeah, what we, have a, we have a specific um, strategy, and we found it's worked really amazingly in, in Frankston, at least, and we've seen whole gangs dissolve into Street Peace, which is phenomenal. We don't even have gangs in Street Peace in, in Frankston region right now, which is awesome. But we found that if we went after the leaders, we have the most problematic youth. They come into street peace and guess what they do into the nest on a Wednesday night or on a Thursday or a Friday when they're, when we're in our drop-in space, you know, they'll come in and they'll create problems. And, you know, often we can tend to kick those guys out because other kids are scared of them or whatever. But we realized that street peace, actually we need to draw them even closer. We need to pursue them with love. And, and what we do is we pursue them and we don't give up and we don't let go and we don't relent. And we've had youth who come and um, been with us, been mentored, gone on a massive journey and then swung back into drugs. I've got one young guy who's who's worked with me for like a year and a half and then he had a terrible breakdown with his family, just went and did some shocking things. He's not proud of it. Sitting with me last week crying as he's going, yeah, I've got to, I'm going to go to jail, right? Um, but he's come back and he knows the truth and he's experienced true love and he's experienced true worth and he knows actually he's actually lived a life free from drugs for a season and he knows he can do better. 
and he knows there's people who can see that he does better and don't just see him because of the mistakes he's made, but actually see him for the value, the intrinsic value that he has. That speaks volumes. Now, I'm not saying that these kids, um, these young people shouldn't, um, uh, you know, go to prison or, um, you know, experience penalties for what they've done. 100% they should. But we don't define them as just problem youth. We see them, that they carry the value that God's placed upon them, that he's, that God saw them in, his, in their mother's womb and had a plan and a purpose for their lives. And we see them like that. And we keep believing. We, we don't give up. Um, uh, you know, um, we keep saying that, you know, that they're, they're past and, and some of them have experienced severe trauma doesn't have to dictate their future. And they are not, um, you know, they, they don't have to be victims of their, you know, live a victim mentality for the rest of their lives. They can actually overcome. And, you know, that's one reason why at The Nest we have people every week who come and share their stories of how they came out of difficult situations and, you know, through faith and through making good choices and through life, they're able to actually succeed. And so we really try to encourage these young people, not, not only love them, but also see these youth chase their hopes and dreams and callings. Jay, the nest sounds just so fascinating and so important, and it's a safe hub. You've got one running there in the heart of Frankston. I think you said you meet on a Wednesday night and there's something like mm-hmm. 80 youth turn up. Is there room, do you think, in towns and cities all over Australia that don't have this sort of facility to get some sort of uh, nest happening? And uh, is this something you could see expanding through, through other, yeah, other states? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got our targets set on three regions right now. Um, but really, um, I, I, I believe that there are people all across this nation who actually have a mandate on their lives to do this. And we really believe that... Um, that, um, I mean, I'll just be straight out, as a Christian organization, we believe that Jesus is the answer and he believes, and we believe that his bride is the answer to the problems of this world. The love of God can transform. And, um, and so we're really keen to um, engage with new regions where there, are, where there are these youth that are hanging around and help and mentor and disciple and, um, and also launch new street peace hubs around the country. So we're, we're working on that. That's my main focus right now. Um, I've taken my hands off locally. We've got an amazing team that runs it locally, and I'm um, spending the next six months really looking at, at building a, a strategic plan and building in our capability to be able to see what we have seen in Frankston, the transformation that we've seen in Transform uh, in Frankston um, just grow across our country. So, yeah, if there's people... You know, you're, you're listening to this and you've got some experience working with youth or you're just like, yep, I'm going to go all in. It, it does come with a sacrifice, to be honest with you. Like everything has a cost in it, but it's so worth it. Um, reach out. We, we would love to chat to you and would love to to help support you. Um, Street Peace is, you know, we, we see that um, we, that there's these shoots, if you would say, that the, the strategy is that we see these shoots or these little vines or these little plants growing up and Street Peace is, is a bit of a lattice to help expand and grow what's being done locally. And um, I, I personally believe that we can see this whole youth problem, that we're calling it, curbed in our nation through the local bride being the salt and the light that it's called to be to love the least of these in their community. Well, Jay, you are a truly an inspiration. And uh, to know that it's you know God who sees past our own character flaws. Uh, you're able to see past uh, some of those flaws in those young people. A recognition that, yes, of course, if you've done a crime, you need to do the time. But in the meantime, uh, the Christian church in communities stepping up and bringing love and kindness into the lives of these young people, uh, creating the sort of community that's different to the sort of community that they'd be getting in a gang sort of a environment. But, Jay, to give a website uh, for listeners to follow up and connect with you or maybe even support the good work that you're doing, let me give that streetpeace.com.au, Street peace.com.au Jay Schelling, he leads Street Peace, he's the founder and CEO you can connect with him at that website streetpeace.com.au Jay, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and your heart with us today on 2020 No worries, thank you for having me and don't forget it's P-E-A-C-E Peace, God bless you 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.